Morning, <laughs> councillors, staff, media. Welcome you to the council meeting of uh, Wednesday the 6th of October. And I'll uh, advise that, uh, a call for apologies, thank you. We're all here, so there is no apologies. I'd just like to also advise that council will adjourn 11 a.m. for the introductions to new and long serving staff and we'll have a short morning tea break to introduce them and celebrate their milestones at that time. Also remind Council that Stantec and NZTA presentations will be at 1pm, after which Council will consider item 16, the Ashburton Tinwald Connectivity Report. Uh, I've allowed plenty of time for good debate and discussion on that report, so an hour and a bit, so um, we will um, have good, robust discussion on that report. Been waiting a wee while for it, so it will be good. Uh, any extraordinary business? I know of none. Declarations of interest? None. Uh, councillors, I might just note the passing of a past councillor, Neville Truman. He uh, passed away this past week. Uh, Neville served two terms on council, 1998 and 2004, until his retirement. Uh, he was on many committees of council, very good community man, and family and friends will be, he'll be sadly missed. So could I ask you all to stand for a moment of silence? And councillors, I've sent a card on behalf of council to the Truman family. <coughs> Next item of business, number four, the confirmation of the minutes. Page four. Any alterations or additions on page four or five? Page six. Seven. Could I um, have someone move that the minutes of the 15th September council meeting be taken as read and confirmed? Councillor McMillan, Councillor Brown. All those in favour, please say aye. 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 Eric. Next item of business, item number five, extraordinary council meeting on the 29th of September 21. Any alterations or additions on page eight? Page nine, ten, eleven. First, also a move that the minutes of the 29th September Extraordinary Council meeting be taken as read and confirmed. Councillor Cameron, Councillor Wilson. All those in favour, please say aye. 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 Carried. Item number six, <coughs> receipt of the minutes. Could I, uh, audit and risk committee minutes. Could I have an audit mover and a seconder that we receive these minutes of the 22nd September audit and risk committee meeting? Yeah. Councillor Brown, Councillor Falloon. <coughs> All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Against, carried. One item to be recommendation here to Council that the Waka Katahi NZA Technical Audit Report. So I'd like to move that recommendation to Council. Councillor Falloon, Councillor Cameron. Any discussion on that? I'll put the motion. I'm in favour. All in favour, please say aye. aye. Carried. Item number seven, Methven Community Board. Council receives the minutes of the 20th of September Methven Community Board meeting. Council McMillan. So moved. Councillor Latham. <coughs> Councillor Mackay, question. Uh, because these are not our minutes, um, are we allowed to ask questions about them? Um, clarification? Or is it a question? Or would perhaps a question and we can refer it back to the community board? Oh, the question is uh, no, it won't go to the community board, it'll go to us. Right. That's why I thought. OK, we'll deal with it here then. OK, the question is, if we do a strategic plan for the Ashburton town, 
which line item of our budget will it come out of? The general rate or an Ashburton special rate? Ashburton town special rate? Um, who and depending on the answer, Mr Mayor, I may have a supplementary question. I think you might. Yes. Um, <coughs> Paul can answer. Paul? Mr Brake? Sorry, could you repeat the question? The question is, if Ashburton, sorry, if this council does a strategic plan for the Ashburton town, which line item will it come out of? General rate or a special rate out of Ashburton town? Sorry, Mr Mayor, it would normally come out of the uh, Ashburton beautification area, which is a mixture of general rate and target rate on Ashburton. Supplementary question. Um, can we have an explanation sometime why the Methven strategic plan cannot come in the same percentages? Um, you probably won't have the answer now. No, no sometime. Yeah. No, me, I can I can come back with clarification on this. Yeah, I think where Mr. Councillor Mackay is coming from is should Methven be paying for their strategic plan when the rest of the district has a different funding mechanism? I actually haven't made comment, I'm asking questions yes. to clarify exactly where it comes from and that will be dependent on where I may uh, make a comment or not at a later date. <coughs> yep. So your question has been noted and um, Mr Bray will come back with the answer <coughs> at a later date. Thank you. Um, no further questions on that? I'll put the motion. I'm in favour. All in favour, please say aye. Aye. Carried. Item number eight, Creative Communities Grants. And uh, just a question, the uh, um, Councillor Brahm of Falloon, you're the council reps there, but you weren't in attendance of the meeting? Didn't even know it was on. Same here. Okay. So how do we pass this? We're in a second, I think, um, that we received the minutes in the report of the 17th September Creative Communities Assessment Committee meeting. meeting. Councillor Brown, Councillor Lovett. All in favour, please say aye. Aye. Carried. Uh, one item there, recommendation to Council. The Council receives the minutes of the... That's we've done that, didn't we? Mm. Oh, no, sorry, we've done that. Yeah, we've done that, yeah. yeah. That's right. Item number nine, <coughs> Youth Council, 8th September 2021 meeting. Move a second that we receive the minutes of the 8th September Youth Council meeting. I'll move that. Councillor Rawlinson. Seconder. Councillor Lovett. Any discussion? Questions? Councillor Lovett. There was one question that came up they would like an answer to is over the skate park bins. Um, where, where are we sitting with that and how far away will they be? delivered or worked on or yeah just a wee bit more background on the skate park well, un not understanding um, they were designing designs to go on on rubbish bins and that was a while ago they did that wanting to know kind of when the, in reality we'll see them or the progress report on it the, the, the youth council has done the designs yes and they've come to council and I think, be implemented. Yes, I think they have <coughs> and they're just waiting um, Okay, is that Steve yes. Fabish? Uh, yes, we'll make a note of that so we can have a, an answer for a youth council and, and council. Yep, thank you. Um, I'll put the motion to receive those minutes. All in favour, please say aye. Aye. Carried. <coughs> Item number 10, the reports, deliberations of the future of Grove Street Park. Welcome, Mr Maybon. Uh, we've had the hearing last week, it was, yeah, and uh, we adjourned that ready for today for a decision. So we've all had time to read all the submissions. We've had the submitters in, asked all the questions, we're now in decision time. Richard, is there anything further you want to add to your report? Um, no, thank you, Mr Mayor. I'm happy to answer questions. Uh, Angus? Uh, sorry, Mr. Mayor, um, a meeting thing. 
I have no trouble logging on or anything. I now go to the Deliver Relations folder and I'm stuck. Can someone help me? Oh. Okay. Oh. Um, Ashling, what? <coughs> Did you go? It's in a separate um, oh. folder. So the, the Grove Street is in another folder in the council. Oh, can I do that? Yes, yeah. Yeah, we're having trouble help. opening it, I think. I can't open it. Um, question, Carolyn? Thank you. Is this working? Um, thank you for the report. My question relates to a few remarks in the report. I have a few questions. Um, can you please elaborate on, on the least risk, risky recommendation? I, I, and also point 11 was a reputational risk. I just want a, some clarification around what that risk means. Please. If you could just tell me what that means. <sighs> Uh, there were two risk aspects, <coughs> um, and they related to options one and three. In terms of option one, I think the potential reputational risk when the community has been quite strong in its support for one option is that voting to the alternative may be perceived as a poor decision. <coughs> Um, in terms of option three, the reputational risk is that it's an option that you could choose to pursue but there's no guarantee that you can actually achieve it because it's re it requires the buy-in and a voluntary agreement of the subdivider. May I? Uh, uh, yeah, this is under option one actually, Richard. Um, reputational risk, so you're just saying it's a reputational risk essentially because most of the submitters objected, wanted the park moved and so by leaving it where it is it's impacting on the council repu reputation, is that what that yes. means? Yes. Okay, thank you. I have um, another question. Yep. Um, we, we've got these circles of, of the location and the people that are, are going to be covered by the location of the park. Um, so the proximity issue appears to be better for the future if it's picture three, um, if you like. But are you suggesting that the park's location um, sort of offsets the advantages associated with proximity to people? Is that the swale adjacent to the park makes it more, gives it an extra advantage over proximity? Uh, what I'm saying in terms of picture three or scenario three <coughs> is that the objective advice from our, our, our parks planner is that that is the, against all the criteria for where you would put a park, that's the best location. Yes. The difficulty is that the developer has submitted a proposal that um, completely complies with, or I understand completely complies with, certainly in the view of the developer, it completely complies with the policies and the rules of the district plan uh, with the park at a different location. So it actually creates a situation where council can't compel the developer to put the park where we want it under our district plan. We can only ask them to agree to it. And the developer has already pointed out that they've actually put the road in a location which imposes more costs on the development than a cul-de-sac because they wanted a good development. So it's a question of how Park Council is prepared to try and push the developer uh, to give us what we want when our district plan only requires it to be where he's put it. Thank you. I, that just wasn't clear in the report. <coughs> Councillor Wilson. Thanks, Mr Mayor. I totally disagree. They want our land where the playground is and where we should... Why do we pussyfoot to them and say, we'll agree if you do what, if we do what you, they want? I'll only agree to disposing of the, the, the existing playground land if they move the playground to where we want it. They want our land, so we want them to shift the playground. Fair enough. Uh, yeah, I think it's two, two different <coughs> processes. <coughs> We're looking here to dispose land the, where the playground is situated is will be under resource consent, which we could possibly sub, probably could submit on moving it. The two need to be separated, I think, Richard. It, that was uh, 
the point I was going to make in response to uh, Councillor Wilson's statement, um, I'm not going to enter into any discussion about whether I'm pussyfooting or not, but what I do want to be clear about is that the decision on the subdivision is a decision that needs to be made under the Resource Management Act and under the district plan. If you wish to uh, leverage your decision um, in regard to the location of the reserve by making the subdivision contingent on this decision, then you're going into a very bad place for council legally. Um, and I would strongly recommend, strongly recommend that you disconnect those two matters. Don't disagree with your desire to get the best outcome with the ratepayer, would never disagree with that. But I think you have to frame this in a way that does not put council at legal risk. Thinking a question for myself, Richard, think a best outcome for the ratepayer. Item number 34 talks about compensation and there'll be a land swap. So if we dispose of this land, there'll be another section of land of the same size, which we, uh, they've indicated where it will be, of uh, playground, which will compensate for that land. Will that be over and above what they would normally have to provide in a subdivision? To be, um, to be perfectly honest with you, Mr Mayor, I couldn't answer that question. Mr Hyde is in the room. He may have a view on that. Um, Mr Winterbourne is not in the room. He would also have a view on that. But I, sorry, I don't know. If we're being compensated, then it should be over and above <coughs> what is the minimum is required for a subdivision. Mr Hyde. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I think... The district plan, as Mr Mabin has already said, uh, and the RMA has a certain process that we have to go through, and through the process of the subdivision consent, we'll be assessing uh, reserves contributions and potentially land that's taken through the subdivision process. Um, I guess the council, as a landowner or as the disposer of the land, also has its own, um, um, its own rights and obligations. Uh, in terms of how it seeks to be compensated for that land. Um, and that's separate, as Mr Mabin said, it's a separate process from the resource consent. So we will be calculating uh, the level of um, compensation required under the district plan as part of the subdivision process. But anything that the council wants to do through this process is slightly separate to that, if, it might, if it's minded to be, uh, to take that course. Yeah, I see. We, we shouldn't. The council shouldn't be giving the land. They could, if they allow it to be moved, then that is okay. But we need the council needs to be compensated for it. Yeah, in in kind or in monetary value. <coughs> Councillors, any other questions? Yeah. Councillor Rawlinson. Yes, I had a question, sort of in that vein. I I'd written down to just clarify in the report. It said disposal <coughs> of the that section where the, the playground. Do we just change the land use or re and retain ownership, or do we de actually dispose of it? Mr Hyde, what is the land use now? It's open <coughs> spaces, is it? Open spaces. As I understand it, it's a fee simple piece of land. It's not reserve status in any particular way. But yes, it, it does have the district plan zoning of open space attached to it. So um, to rezone that land is, um, by definition, requires a plan change. But uh, and this is where I, um, I'm sort of getting to the limit of my technical knowledge of, of property law. Um, I'm not sure whether you can actually vest, I guess you could vest it, could you, Richard, you know? Or whether it would be reserved as road. Um, there will be a process that it could be taken as road, um, bearing in mind that it is still, it is already council land and it will remain council land, so it's slightly different to other situations where the council is taking on land that's currently owned by somebody else. It's more of a change of the status of the land, I guess. The supplementary to, to that, um, my next part of my question was, if it's a, would it be considered, in that case, a council road extension of Catherine Street? Mm -hmm. And if so, the, with the sewer pipes that are under it, who pays for the roading development? we grant them this to do this and um, 
and would there be extra work done to protect all the sewer pipes that are underneath it? And who pays for that? Um, my expectation, and uh, Em will correct me if I'm wrong, is that the subdivider will develop the road. Yeah. Um, in regard to the requirement to protect the sewer pipes, you've got sewer pipes under roads all over your district. So I'm not sure that there would be any requirement for extra protection. Um, but, if, but if there were, again, I would expect that to be a cost for the developer, not for the council. Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, Rod, Councillor Latham. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Just a very quick question. If we agree to dispose of this piece of land, what is the procedure for disposing it? Do we put it to tender? Do we get it valued and negotiate a price? Do we put it to auction? Or do we, logically, you would think we would offer it to the developer um, at a price negotiated uh, with valuations? How is the procedure there? Because if we agree to dispose of it, someone else might want to buy it. Um, um, they Mr. can't do anything with it, though. But I think yeah. Mr. Wendelborn's just walked into the room before. <coughs> have a view on that. I'm not sure whether you heard that. Oh, did you hear the question? Yeah. We're talking Grove Street. <coughs> Councillor Latham's asking... How would we dispose of it? How would we dispose of it? If we agree to dispose of it, uh, is, is there an assumption that we would offer it to the developer at an agreed price? Or do we put it on the open market? Uh, or do we dispose of it like we dispose of other land, getting an evaluation and, and uh, selling it at that <coughs> price? It's, it's really up to the council to decide how they wish to um, dispose of it. Normally, yes, we would get a valuation and then negotiate with the prospective purchaser. In this case, though, the, the, the um, subdivider wishes to turn it into a road, so we could possibly swap it for another portion of road of the same size in a location that we wished. So we could swap it for land and have that, as we say, as a reserve. So effectively, there would be no exchange of money. We get land, they get the land back to be on to be used for road. Thank you, Councillor Flynn. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah. I've got a little bit confused. Mm -hmm. I always thought we were just going to swap one bit of land, mm -hmm. i.e., the Grove Street Park, for another bit of land that they were uh, that was going to be turned into a playground. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So why are we says. talking about costs when it's simply only a, a land swap? Yeah, it doesn't state that in here, no. does it? <clears throat> it's in the report, but in the recommendation it's not there. Because yep. following on from that, there's another one which may follow on from that last confusion. It says the 5% um, sum that we get from each section sale will be reduced by the cost of the land. But how can it be when we're just doing a land swap? Um, we'll still get the same 5% as we normally would. As I say, I'm not <coughs> Brown, <coughs> what Mr Mason said at the hearing and what Mr Windlebourne has referred to uh, today is that there is a land swap um, envisaged, which is 881 square metres that is currently Grove Street Park, um, being swapped for 881 square metres, which would adjoin the land set aside in the development proposal for reserve. So that's an additional 881 beside the reserve, which uh, would have become in future roading access to land to the east, and at that point, an additional uh, that would in turn be swapped for another 881. Mm. So, there is a land swap of our 881 for the developer's 881 in here. In addition, the developer pays 5% of the value of all new sections that are created, and some of that contribution comes in land in the form of the reserve as shown on the plan. 
that's sure. the reserve <coughs> addition. That is the reserve next to the playground. It's, no, the, the playground itself is land. The 881 beside it is the land swap. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Councillor Cameron? Are we all happy with that? Can I have Questions? another question? Questions? Yeah, great, thank you. When I look at, again, going harping back to the maps, um, Richard, circles, one square of playground looks bigger than the other square. The council um, alternative suggestion map three, more centrally located, is a bigger square than map two. Is that just me and my poor eyesight? Or is that because um, open spaces had hoped for a bigger playground? <coughs> I don't think it's your eyesight because my eyesight has come to the same conclusion. Yes. So I, um, I'm assuming that when um, when Bert spoke with the IS team, he indicated roughly these five sections in the centre. Yes. So it's a it's a bit of a bigger lot with a longer street frontage. May I ask a supplementary yeah. question? Um, what is the optimal size for a playground by New Zealand standards today? In you know 2021. The Guidelines in our open space strategy say 3,000 square metres to 5,000 square metres. So my next question is how big is the proposal that is in the recommendation where the playground is adjacent to the swale? The... I thought it was 2.2 uh, or 2.4. 2,400 square metres, I'm not sure I have that particular map with me, but if you add the um, 881 meter, square metres for the land swap, and it's probably all of 3,000 anyway, then you've got the um, what you've referred to as a swale, which I think is a stormwater utility reserve, yep. which is makes it larger again, I can't recall the exact size of that. Just a quick question, um, this is just a quick question or a comment really, it would be good to have that figure um, I, I, I think we need to build a. If we're going to have an alternative playground, I think we need to build it so it meets modern day standards. So it would be good to have a quantifiable figure in my. I think the um, subdivision consent will have the minimum requirements in it. That would be so good. Yeah, can we confirm will, that? It would have. Mr. Hyde, can mm. confirm that? Yes. So that'll leave your fears, yep. Yeah, that's what we'll have between 3,000 and 5,000 as per modern day standards in the subdivision consent. Has to be, as a minimum. Is that a consent? Is that what you're saying, Ian? The, the subdivision consent will be reviewed by our open spaces team as well for suitability, mm -hmm. uh, as, as all land that's taken through reserves contributions is. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I'm just busily trying to look up the, the consent at the moment, but, but, but I think Actual size, and, and Mr. Fabish might, well, I don't have enough room up here, might, might um, correct me on this, but um, quantity is a factor, mm -hmm. but there are a number of other factors that will determine what the suitability of a piece of land as well. So I don't think it needs to be um, the ultimate decider, uh, because of course there are other questions about maintenance and, um, um, and, and the upkeep of that land as well. So in certain circumstances, it might not be the best to have a bigger piece of land. It might be better to have a more efficiently used smaller piece, just depending on the individual circumstances. Mm -hmm. um, that, that would be... Sorry. Councillor Wilson. Thanks, Mr Mayor. I think we're um, getting confused with two things. The developer wants our land in swapping for a park land. To me, the 5% doesn't come into it. They pay their financial commitment, um, financial fee, because of the subdivision that's council rules. I'm in favour then, we swap, <coughs> this is the straight out swap, our land for a park land with no, no equipment on it, just the land. And if you look at the third circle, it's much more central. The second circle is a whole lot of rural A land in it. What on earth would we build a playground away over in that corner 
we're in about a third of it is rural A. We, a playground is for kids to play on. I would be agreeable for a land swap for our land for the equivalent 2,000 square metre playground north of where, where it is on circle three. The 5% the financial statement is completely separate. That's what they pay. And as a sweetener, they give us $50,000 towards the playground. We build it. We've got to build the playground to our standards. I never trust developers to build their playgrounds. So my contention is a land swap on the position of Circle 3 for 2,000 square metres for the new playground plus 50 grand, seeing they've inconvenienced us. Yeah, um, I'll just deal with that. I'm not sure if we can add the $50,000 in, in there, but I, I was thinking about how, in the recommendation, and the recommendation we've got is Council agrees to the disposal of Grove Street Park, and I thought of adding and agree on fair compensation. Mm. That'll give it back to staff to agree on fair compensation. Adding in, but um, no mover or second of that yet. Still questions, Councillor Brown. Yeah, I've got some councils, some questions here. Um, why are we going to change the rules we always have at all other developers? We just start picking now because you think it's not right. To me, it's completely out of, out of square here. We are not here to make the decision who's paying more or less. We have to be fair to every developer. I bought a bit of land from council. I paid for it. I paid for a proper price, I've got a soft tip for you. <clears throat> Nothing else. Why should someone else have to pay more? I know it looks uh, nice, it looks really fine, we ask a wee bit more because they've got money, it shouldn't even be coming into it. The questions I've got, if I go back to the circles, as I understood from the developer, the play area is there, and next to the play area is a wee bit of land what is the swap for the roading and that was going to be a road reserve for the future. I heard that. I was sitting in the meeting and please some other, other people said this as well. If we start changing that we want to have it somewhere else, that is the developer's right. If it is not right, we've got staff there, well we don't, the gentleman there, who know what can be done and how it's getting been done. We go far too deep, we just got only one thing here to do in the disposal of the bit of land, yes or no. No. I'd agree. Any further questions? No. If not, I've got to move the motion. No. And it is that council agrees to the disposal of Grove Street Park and negotiates fair compensation for the land. Give a second after that. Councillor Cameron. Open for debate. Uh, Councillor Wilson. No, totally disagree. We as councillors, we've got to make the policy. I disagree with Councillor Brown. If a developer wants a nice piece of land that's absolutely vital to their subdivision, they pay a premium to get it. We're not there to advantage developers. Other developers have had to, they have to, if they want to piece of land that they presumptuously put into their, they've sold all these sections with the presumptuous idea that they're just going to take that land regardless. And I disagree with the motion, it leaves it so woolly. What will it, I mean, negotiate a, what was it, final? Fair, fair compensation. Fair compensation. Fair to who? Fair to the developer. In other words, let's give it to them and do exactly what they want. Totally disagree. I think we spell out exactly what our terms are. Councillor Ethan. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, in part, I agree with Councillor Wilson. I, that was the question, what is fair compensation? That was the question. Uh, I'm, uh, I think we're getting a wee bit emotional about the fact that the developer and the real estate company were they um, they bolted out of the gate a bit soon they were advertising it 
and selling sections, and they haven't, e haven't even, even approached the council for a resource consent to begin the development. So it's created some ill feeling and some angst. Uh, I am in opinion that it, it's a good move. Um, how we value that and how we value the compensation, I'm not sure. So, um, yeah, that's, the, that's my pondering. What is fair compensation? Councillor Brown. Oh. Pardon? And then. Yeah. I, I still go back to the basics. You know, we've been doing it all the time. We start changing rules on the spot. It's not an apology in the moment, otherwise it would have been on the table. So go back to the basics. All things will fall in place after that because the rules are there. Councillor Cameron. Um, I don't think, Lane, that the rules have been altered. We've just said fair compensation, which we're trusting the team to sort out. So I think that's a reasonable expectation that they understand what the market is and what fair compensation is. My question then, so if we agree to dispose of the existing park at Grove Street, is that unlinked, or my comment, not my question, is that unlinked then from the location of the playground and the size of the playground? Yes. So does that, yes. that then goes to Ian and his team, or who looks after that? It'll be with the resource consent process. Be with the resource consent. Does that then come back to council? Or uh, delegated to authority, I would think. And then, can I ask a question, or is no, it? No, we're not oh, in the back. So I, I'm going to make a remark. So I presume then that when Ian and the planning team look at location and size of playground, they take into consideration the gold standard in New Zealand, I would assume. You would assume that would be good. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, any further speakers for or against the motion? Councillor Lovett. I'm, I'm for it, and I think we have got fair compensation. That, that putting a road in that piece of land to extend Catherine Street and the, in that reserve <coughs> on the playground, that's going to be a future extension going into another subdivision in the future. And I think, you know, I like it the way it is. I think we just can't keep chopping and changing and, and developers. They may have made mistakes, but um, it's, yeah, they've learnt, probably learnt their lesson. Councillor McMillan. Thank you, I agree. I think disposing of the... Um, Park for a road is a good idea. We want pro we want to see progress in in Timwald, and the sections will do that. Um, we need houses, um, as we have heard recently. Um, and I just, I suppose, what everyone else is saying is just we know what happens with um, playgrounds and subdivisions. We've had problems before, and it's just for the staff to just really keep a, a good eye on it. And, I've got a question to the the, oh, for the in debate mode, Councillor Wilson. Can you turn your... the, the mover of the motion. Okay. When you say fair compensation, are you toying with the financial contribution as well? No, it, it'll all be, they'll take all that into account, but the Council will be no worse off, I would imagine, at the end of the conversation. Well, I'd like to move an amendment that fair compensation does not include the developer being exempt from the financial contribution. They can't be. Yes, but the, the, the developer wants to give us playground equipment in lieu of. So you just, you want to add on to that? Uh, I think it should. Be. And if, what are those words? Yes, if you're going to have fair compensation in land, nothing to do, I, I want to exclude the 5%. They still pay the 5%. percent they have to, yep. But I mean, the developer doesn't want to do that. They want to take that 5% and put it into playground equipment. And so that shouldn't be part of the motion. We're just dealing with that piece of land, fair compensation for that land, what we're dealing with here today. The resource consent will deal with what goes in the park. The 5% will have to be there because it's a minimum standard. Playground has to be there because it has to be there under that consent. I, I feel that it's covered, but okay. Um, you happy with no no amendment? No. Well, okay. Or we'll watch with interest. <coughs> right. we'll Councillor Flynn. Yeah, well, I was just going to agree with you, there, Mr. Mayor. In the 
basically the money that the developers were going to give us was going to come out of the 5% contribution anyhow. Yes. So overall, we will still be getting our 5%. The thing is that uh, they're paying 50000 or 100000 whatever it is, up front before they actually need to. Coming back to an earlier comment before about how they may have not followed the rules fully, this is not unusual in that a lot of developers have advertised sections for sale when the land is simply only there and hardly a plan has been done. So I don't think they can be careful for just saying we've got sections for sale and um, to me that is not an issue and should not be part of it. Any further speakers for or against the motion? We'll put the motion, I'll go read it to you, that Council agrees to the disposal of Grove Street Park and negotiate fair compensation. <coughs> All those in favour, please say aye. 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 Against? Carried. Okay. Unanimous. Next item is number 11, Dog Control Policy and Practices Report 2021. Uh, Mr Catchpole. I'd like to talk to your report on Jane as well. Talk to your report, please, Rick. <coughs> or was it self explanatory? I, I think through you, Mr. Mayor, this is an annual requirement to do this report, so it probably is pretty self explanatory, but I'm happy to okay. answer any We questions. might just go to questions then. Councillor's questions? Oh, yeah. Councillor Mackay. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, paragraph 8, the Ashford River Dog Park, is that open or closed at the moment? Thank you. Through the Chair, um, it's currently, shall we say, under refurbishment and repair, but also that's tied in with the uh, development um, business development in that area as well. So there are some uh, fencing changes, fencing repairs, but also uh, some damage uh, to the banks uh, being addressed as well. Um, we are informed that this should all be completed by December. So the question was, is it open or closed at the moment? I, well, th I think it's closed. Is it Steve? Yeah, I'm pretty as sure a, it's closed. As a dog park, it's closed. It's closed, thank you. Councillor Right, Mr Mayor, why is it closed, considering that we have the Ashford River Dog Park closed? I'm not entirely okay. sure that I understand the question, Mr okay. Mayor, but I, I think possibly Steve Fabish might be able to answer. My understanding of it being closed at the moment is because there's earthworks going on and trees being felled. Uh, so, Councillor Mackay is going to rephrase the question. No, I think I've finally got an answer that it's closed because there are trees and construction work inside the park. Thank you. Is that right? Yes. Yep. Mm. And no offence. Thank you. Uh, just, I have just one question, Rick, and it's on um, okay. 19 under the statistical information. I'm looking down at right at the bottom, number eight, prosecutions, and there is none. Yet, I think the, you have proceeded with some. One I'm aware of. Not as a that wasn't a prosecution, Mr Mayor, that was an infringement which somebody elected not to pay but was followed up by the courts, but that was not a prosecution. Not a prosecution. No. Okay. no. So that'll, is there an, um, reading correctly, is there an infringements line in there? Yes. There is. In the table. In the table, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's good. Thanks. Further questions, councillors? Just, just one question if I can. Yep. Table one talks about dangerous dogs. You've got them by owner conviction. 
sworn evidence or owner admitting in, in writing. What is the difference there? What? Just a question. I just don't understand it. Thank you. Through the chair, this will come about where we've had dogs uh, transferred into the district and the owner makes uh, any statements in writing as opposed to a dog control officer seeking evidence uh, and then classifying it. Just a further question on the prosecutions. What would warrant a prosecution? Thank you. Through, through the chair, this uh, could be an unaddressed infringement or uh, an appeal against an infringement that we then take to prosecution if we feel there is sound grounds uh, around that infringement. So it leads on from an infringement? Yes. Okay, thank you. That's just, I've just oh, got one Catherine question, and it just relates to the Methven Dog Park. Do you know how many days that was closed due to um, one of the neighbour's trees falling down and ripping the fence? No, sorry, through you, Mr Mayor, I don't know. I, do, I was aware there was an issue, but um, I'd have to ask our Open Spaces staff. Thank you. So we'd like to move the report. Councillor Brown, seconded. Councillor Falloon, further debate, discussion? Put the motion, I'm in favour. All in favour, please say aye. Aye. Carried. Thank you. Next item, number 12, District Licensing, Licensing Committee Annual Report, 1st July 20 to the 30th of June 2021. Once again, a statutory report. Any questions, councillors? I'll just read in the report, it's item under, under 10, trends or issues, and you must make mention that greater resourcing of police in particular areas would be very effective. Are you suggesting that they would could up the game a little bit? Thank you. Through the Chair, this is a direct quote from the DLC panel right. as how they would see improvements. Right, so that's, they're recommending that police up the game a wee bit? Yes. Thank you. Any further questions? Uh, Councillor Mackay. I'll move. Second, gets a Brown. Over debate, discussion. If not, I'll put the uh, council camera. Do we for oh, this is actually a question again, I have to put it as a statement. Is this report forwarded to the police so that they can see the recommendation? I would suggest should say to make it not a question. I'll take the question. Yeah. You know, uh, the re the is, recommendation is was that the police up the game, I think someone said. Is, does the police get, presumably they get a copy of this report to have an opportunity to consider it? Thank you. Through, through the chair, uh, normally this report is posted on our website and made publicly available and sent through to ARLA as well as part of our reporting concerns. But certainly I take your point and we can make this available to the police. It might be advisable to forward to the police of Ashburton as well, just for the information. Yeah, but the DLC, police sit on that? No, they, they don't, Mr Mayor, but um, they, we do have a lot of liaison with them on all things to do with this. There's the Ashburton Alcohol Accord, uh, the police are part of that, uh, but there's also, they have input into every application, they have the right to object, and when they object, as they have indeed done with one we've got at the moment for a manager's certificate, then that triggers a hearing with the DLC. So there is ongoing liaison with the police on every application and also on our controlled purchase operations and other enforcement that we carry out. So I don't, there's nothing in here that would be of any surprise to them, but we'll certainly forward it to them. Yep. Thank you. Stuart? Yeah, with your permission, I'd like to ask a question too. OK. Um, have we any idea how they make those risks? I mean, they've got squash clubs and rugby clubs on two and some on 15. Mm. What's the, is it, I guess it's nothing to do with us, but have you any idea how they make those criteria? Um, yes, we, we do have criteria. I could show you those at some point if you're interested. Do we make the decision? Uh, the staff do. Yeah. yeah. Like the highest risk one in the whole district is the rodeo. So it's the top end. 
and the bottom end might be a supper club that twice a year have a dinner. So it's within that range. Well, I see rugby clubs and golf clubs and squash clubs. Some are two and some are 15. There must be bad boys in them or else some <laughs> they don't visit at night. So they're rugby clubs. Yep. And it depends how often they're selling alcohol as well. No further questions, debate. I'll put the motion on in favour. All in favour, please say aye. Aye. Carry. Thank you. Okay. Moving thank over, you. thank you, Rick and Jay. Yeah, I see that. Yeah. Forestry wind damage. What have you done about that? Yeah. I have a report here from the, the wind of not so long ago. And um, have Terry and Colin. Good report, background. Tell us exactly what's happened, what you're doing to harvest the fallen trees. Any questions? That's Cameron. Um, thank you for the report. It makes grim reading. It's a little sad to lose trees at 12 years and 21 years. That would be devastating. Have we, are these trees planted in high, presumably in high wind zones? If we replant, is there any way we can mitigate the <coughs> likelihood of this happening again? Uh, yeah, through you, Mr Mayor. Um, there's been a lot of work done in Canterbury on trying to work out different ways to plant trees that um, the old Forest Service kind of a strip system in Earl Forest. That sort of uh, regime wouldn't be possible with our blocks because we haven't got the, the size to, to do something like that. Um, apart from that, it's, it's really... Um, yeah, there's not a lot we can do. Uh, you know, we try and mitigate it through uh, leaving a, a more, um, well, a denser um, area of trees on the windward side of the plantation to protect it and so forth. But um, you yeah, know, when you get a storm like we had uh, back last month, there's not a lot we can do really. Um, you know, that, that was taking out trees that we wouldn't have expected to be blown down. It was, it, no, yeah. Is this something um, I presume there is a lot of um, breeds of pine trees and they're looking at deeper rooted ones and skinnier ones or fatter ones or whatever. And presumably you take all that into consideration when selecting the variety of tree to plant in these windswept sort of areas. Yeah, they, they, they don't specifically grow trees to, um, you know, for, for wind, so to speak. Um, there's been a lot of work done on um, trees in the... For, uh, for instance, for Mackenzie Basin, we, we were, they have issues with, um, you know, obviously, you know, a harsh environment. Yeah. Um, yeah. They, they wouldn't be as quick growing as what we, we normally have. Um, yeah, so, yeah, that, <laughs> what I, I can't give you a specific answer from that point of view uh, for how we can mitigate the risk, but, um, you know, the, I've had reports that uh, in the stable area we, we had a lot of loss, you know, there was winds going over 200 kilometres an hour um, and, you know, that's, I think, anywhere, any tree is going <laughs> to... Um, uh, of note, I guess, is that um, Douglas fir, which we do have, some of our plantations are planted with Douglas fir, they tend to... Um, uh, put up with uh, strong winds a lot better. They don't have the larger sail area that Radiata Pine has, but they also are slower growing and more difficult to establish. So, you know, we only put those where we can absolutely guarantee we can so get a crop. It's a risk benefit decision. Uh, exactly, yeah. Um, generally, windstorms, when they do affect plantations, they generally affect the older um, age classes. So, you know, we, we in the past have managed to um, salvage most of the timber that has blown and uh, then your losses are, are mitigated then you're only the main loss you're faced with there is ex more expensive harvesting costs but you've still got the um, you know the, the quality of the wood coming out isn't uh, isn't affected so yeah thank you Councillor yeah, Flew. thank you Mr Dear. with the number of wind events that we're happening and the boom size from climate change saying they're going to get more frequent, at what stage do council have to look at our forestry operations and say, no more? 
Yeah. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, we we did this. We had the same sort of naval gazing exercise when when we had 2013 storm, and and um, what came out of that is we the council did make a decision to sell its freehold forests. So there has been um, you know, that uh, consideration in the past. Uh, what we're faced with now is we've got um, predominantly most of our uh, forests are on reserve land and the options that are available for what we can do with that reserve land is, is, is limited. Um, another impact is, that's really hitting us now as well is um, with the ETS, um, all our forests now, apart from a small area, um, are what we call pre-1990 forests. So, which means if we, um, or if somebody else takes that area out of trees, they have significant uh, harvest um, um, deforestation liabilities. And at the current price, I think it's over $70 a, a tonne at the moment. Yeah, you're looking at uh, costs exceeding $25,000 a hectare just to cover your liabilities. And that, that's, when you look at land development, that's quite significant and it makes it quite hard to stack up. So that's, that's an additional thing that's lumped on our, our forests at the moment. Um, what, I, what I'd like to work towards, I, and it's something I haven't, I've talked to Colin about, um, is actually looking at maybe opportunities for planting forests in, in more forest friendly areas, generally the foothills or somewhere where you've got good, good growth, maybe not as much risk from that wind damage that you get on the plains. And if we could plant areas in um, a, a significant area uh, in a location like that, we could actually, there is a possibility of offset planting, so you actually you plant in that other location and free up that land for other use. So you, you know, you're basically doing a, a forest swap. So that's an opportunity that may um, may be possible to, to examine. Uh, there's quite a lot of work involved in it, um, but it also could help if the, if the um, council wanted to move towards uh, growing trees for its um, ETS liability. So you know, it could be a... Um, Something we could look to. Definitely, I'm, you know, I want to pursue it more once once things calm down a bit and get over this lump. So, yeah. I think um, you'd get the will of council there to to do that um, because we have been looking or asking staff to investigate alternative sources of um, of investments. So, yeah, um, and that might um, fit into that, that basket, possibly. Yeah. Uh, Councillor Brown. Well, Terry, you, you almost answered my questions and it was the carbon, carbon credit, because I think that might almost be worth more than the trees. Is that right? Yeah. Um, or could it be? You talk about our current forests. The forests we've got now, the small ones, the areas we've got now, are blown over. Okay, it costs us money to get it restored, but the carbon credits we've got in those areas is worth more than the timber. Yeah. Unfortunately, as I said, they were pre-1990 forests, mm -hmm. so we don't, the council does not get any recognition of the carbon locked in those forests. Um, pre-1990, I mean, they, they drew a line in the sand saying, um, at, at, at that, when the Kyoto Protocol was put together, and saying, okay, here's our forests then, that's our sort of our forest bank, any new plantings after that date is going to have a positive impact on sequestering carbon. Uh, removing any forests from that pre-1990 bank is a negative. So it's the only, yeah, there's, there's no recognition, unfortunately, for the carbon. That, um, okay, so the pre-1990s is worth nothing? Nothing. Yeah. After that, you can't get it. Yeah, the, the council, at the time of the ETS being put into place, they did receive what they uh, termed as compensation units. So that was to allow for um, some deforestation of those 1990 forests, but it was um, it, it, well the council since sold those credits um, and um, you know, received you know, reasonable money for. But um, yeah, it's it, um, 
that, that was a one-off, so, yeah. It's, Thank you. I love it. I'm just going to ask about our forestry in general. What, are we, what market are we aiming for with it? The building industry or fence posts? You know, where, where, where are we sitting on the spectrum when you're looking at planting a, a forest? Uh, through you, Mr. Uh, Mayor. Um, yeah, we, the, the, um, the top dollar is paid for your, um, your local sawmills. Um, for those higher grade logs that are looking for, for structural timber. Um, the markets do move up and down. Um, we've just um, recently had a period of you know, very high export prices. And that's, that's been wiped out by some horrendous um, freight rates. Um, but yeah, generally that local um, structural market is, is always going to be a premium. Postwood also a premium especially at the moment, that they just can't get enough postwood. So, um, but you look at the, the plantations that we're salvaging now, the, the older trees, the older stuff we've got is around about 21, 22 years old, which is still <coughs> reasonably young. We are um, recovering good amounts of those higher grade um, uh, uh, products. Uh, unfortunately, the younger stuff, we are only getting the likes of chip and lower grade wood. Um, so, yeah, that's, but that's always going to happen if you get young trees blown over. There's only limited um, markets you can place that. Yeah. Yeah, Councillor McKay. Uh, Mr Mayor, whenever you're ready, I'm willing to move the recommendation, but I'd like to make a couple of comments first, if that's okay. Okay, I've just got one more question. Well, I'll, so I'll, I'll, I will second. Okay, I'll do it. Still got another question. Shall we go to the questions? Okay, my Good. comment's kind of a question, but go to Councillor right. I've got two, two brief questions, Terry. Looking at that map, as you say, Westerfield area, have we got more trees there than north of the Ashburton? Uh, yes, indeed. Yeah. Generally our forests are um, west of the uh, Ashburton River. We've got, we've got only small pockets. There's, there's one um, reasonably significant area in the, in the gorge. And, you know, an exception to that, but um, yeah, our forests, uh, we've got a lot of forests in that wester field, then going towards Mayfield as well. Yeah, that so light soil, obviously good. The second question is, were those trees pruned or non-pruned that went down? Uh, what our regime at the moment, we, we, we get virtually no benefit from, um, uh, as a premium for the, uh, the, cot, the logs that come out because of the um, pruned logs out of Canterbury aren't regarded with very well because they get resin pocket problems. So we, at the moment, we only prune the exterior of the plantation, which is a bit of a, uh, it's a mechanism to keep the uh, boundaries tidy, try and uh, re reduce the amount of fence damage, um, and also get a, a better quality log out of those uh, out, outside trees that generally get heavy branches. Um, and the rest of the plantation is just thin to waste. Pruning generally doesn't have a lot of impact on wind stability. Um, the only the exception to that would be where you've got a shelter belt and you and you actually do um, you know side trimming right up the stem, and then then you will you know be able to you know, mitigate to some degree your wind damage. Yeah. Councillor Kai, a question: the moving and then. Uh, Mr Mayor, my question is, um, you move around the country um, and attend many local government things. If you ever catch up with the Minister of the Environment, Honourable David Parker, can you please explain these photographs to him, and especially uh, paragraph one that is very well written by <coughs> Mr O'Neill. This windstorm that recently affected many of Council's plantations occurred eight years to the day of the last big wind in 2013. Well done, Terry. Um, Canterbury, Mr Mayor, if it was to be have pine trees grown on it, they would have been here when we arrived. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The first civilizations that arrived here in Canterbury, there was canuka and bush and everything, and when the Europeans arrived, it was tussock. Now that gives you an indication that that's what grows on the Canterbury Plains, not pine trees. Um, why I want you to have a yarn to Honourable Mr Parker if you ever run across him, is that on the Jamie Mackay show, which runs from 12 noon to 1 o'clock on ZB stations, he made a comment, oh, if farmers want to change their land use, they can go to trees. 
That is not possible from the Ashburton River to the Rangitata River, Mr Mayor, because Councillor Wilson is absolutely right. The soils there will not allow the damp pine tree to root, to um, have strong enough roots to survive the windstorms. Um, if you can do that for me, Mr Mayor, that would be great. I move the recommendation. Thank you. And just to comment on that, I'm meeting with Mr Parker on Monday of next week. He's attending the mayoral forum. So, I didn't know. Thank you. Yeah, Take this very, very <laughs> and, um, uh, second to Councillor Graham. Speakers for or against the motion? If not, the recommendation is that, that we receive the forestry and wind damage report. All those in favour, please say. Aye. 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 So we, it is 11 o'clock, so we're going to break. We're not going to break. We're going to move on to welcoming new and long serving staff. And today is a special day because we are going to um, acknowledge the new staff from the Art Gallery who are joining the Council staff, so uh, you'll do that welcome very shortly, Sarah, but a special day for them coming into the um, Council Department. Great, so thank you very much, uh, Mr Mayor. Uh, as you said, we uh, do have um, the Art Gallery team here, and just to explain, um, if you can just uh, stand up uh, so that the councillors can uh, put a face to a name, um, everyone, in terms of new staff. And then for uh, Kate and Bryn, uh, please just walk towards Hamish uh, to uh, get your service recognition certificate later on. And apologies for my back being towards you. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, yes, I'd, I'd like to introduce to, um, our new starters. Uh, we've got Shireen Hoss Raviani, and she's our Art Gallery and Museum Director. Uh, some of you may have met Shireen before, um, probably possibly multiple times. So, she's leading um, the now combined team. We've got Simone Barnsdale, and she's our Education and Programs Coordinator. And we have Hannah Crichton, who's our Collections and Exhibition Assistant. And we've got Martina Tate, who's our Visitor Engagement Coordinator. So uh, that is the team of four uh, that uh, currently preside um, in sort of an art gallery focus, um, blending with the museum team. We've got a curator role that is currently um, being advertised. And we have got a Deputy Director uh, to assist uh, Shireen with the combined team, uh, who's starting just after Labour weekend. So. Um, that will be the, the full muster of the team, so that's fantastic. Um, today I also would like to introduce you to Nicholas Law, who's our senior planner. As part of Ian's team, uh, we've got Bernard, sorry, Bernard um, Butterau, who's our utilities contracts engineer, uh, so he's part of Hernando's operations team. Uh, we've got Alicia Esker, <coughs> who's our consents compliance officer, part of Andy's um, assets team. Uh, and we've got Simone Hopwood, who's part of my team as Senior People and Capability Advisor, and she's uh, taken over Natasha's role, who's on parental leave currently. So uh, those are the new faces here before you, and um, at the end of this presentation, I'm sure they'll look forward to saying hi um, over a cup of tea. <laughs> In terms of long service, we have two people that we'd like to recognise today. Uh, the first is Kate Green. Uh, Kate started at ADC in 2016 at EA Network Centre as part of the reception team. She was approximately there for a year and then transferred to customer services um, within the administra um, administration building. And then in 2019, she moved into the position of building systems administrator. In this role, she works closely with Michael Wong, our building services manager, and together they're responsible for Council's ongoing IANs building accreditation. This is a biannual audit, um, which will occur in February 2022. So on behalf of Council and our building community, all the very best for the upcoming audit, um, and congratulations on five years' service. And I'd also um, like to ask and thank um, Bryn Brockhurst, who also started in 2016. Um, he started in the newly created role of Quality Assurance Documents Officer, um, and Bryn has led the charge working closely with our external scanning provider to digitise all our hard copy property and consents files. Um, he's managed the shipment 
of all our physical records, which we must retain to an off-site storage facility. Um, and he has scanned the documents and audit, audits them to ensure that uh, we're able to dis destroy the hard copy records um, once we've got the scanned ones up to standard. So um, his efforts and goals will enable us to move into the new building without the need for any historic physical records on site. So um, thank you very much for your hard effort to get to this point. There's still um, time to, to continue with your mission um, so that we achieve that goal um, in totality. So yes, thank you very much and for five years service. Thank, thank you, Sarah. Well done. Well done, everyone. Welcome uh, to the new art gallery people and uh, the long service. It's, um, it's always good to knock up those years, get a little bit of recognition for it as well. So we're going to break now for morning tea, so um, come have morning tea with the councillors as we get to chat. We'll take our masks off because we'll be eating, so it'll really get to look at each other. And we'll be back here at 11.35. Thank you. And just through, and just through here and to the right.
Welcome back, uh, everybody, to the afternoon tea break. We're moving on to item number 14, which is the carryover funds from 2021 to the 21-22 financial year. And we have, is it uh, Mr. Break? And Erin as well. Thank, welcome, Erin. I think this is your first time in front of council as a, as a finance manager, if I've got that correct? Yes. Yep, welcome. Thank you. And congratulations. Uh, anything further to add to your report? No, Mr Mayor, it's just a normal carryover from year to year of unspent expenditure. Questions, councillors? Councillor Mackay. Um, thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, item 11, stock water. This covers the original fish screening project and is considered necessary to retain the budget permission should council be compelled to proceed with the construction of the structure. Mr Mayor, I'm wondering why we are still carrying this over because I actually thought the staff member uh, in charge made it quite clear to council that in his considered opinion he would not recommend such action to council because of the cost. Um, and I back that staff member to question one. So why are we continuing to carry over? Through the Mr. Mayor, um, that, that's really, um, because ECAN still have it on the radar, uh, although they understand that uh, we may not need it and uh, they are happy for us to hold all to putting it on, uh, uh, putting it in, installing it um, if we are going to be closing the race, they do understand. So however, we have had to keep, just keep it there because we haven't um, fi finally made that decision. Is it loan funded? It would be loan funded, is it? Loan funded. It's loan funded. It's loan funded. So if it's not required, it won't um, incur any cost. It's not rate funded. So. Yeah. I was actually inquiring why the item is actually... Yeah, I understand that. Yeah. <coughs> <coughs> no, and it is... And if I can carry on. Next question is the district water management operation. This is carryover will be directed to support commitment to additional resourcing in the stock water activity, strategic closures, and ongoing works associated with surface water strategy action plan. Um, we have no dates, um, we have no plan, so why is it? We have a date for the. Uh, uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, the. Um, there will be a report on the status or a review for the like of actions against the surface water strategy at the next activity, activity briefing. So council will have visibility on the th um, in a summary form of the things that were in that surface water strategy and where we are at in relation to those obligations. On that basis I'm wanting to move the recommendation. Any other questions before we to get them over? No. Councillor Mackay moved. I'll second. Councillor McMillan seconded. Debate, discussion? With a small wee question, but you were too oh, quick. Okay, take a question. The satellite site yard, its waste reduction, 0.17, where's what? that? Probably Neil. Probably <coughs> Neil. Point 0.17? Yes. The satellite site yard, where is that? Um, I believe that's the Heinz one. Oh, okay. Yep. 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 Thank you. No further speakers for or against? I'll put the motion. I'm in favour, all in favour, please say aye. 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 Carried. Thank you. Uh, get the work done. Uh, item number 15 financial variance reports. <coughs> We've got two there. One is the June one, we'll do the June one first. Which has been updated from the last June one you had, as the ins and outs have all been put in. Questions, councillors? So go page by page, start page number three. Excuse me, can I just make one note, one change in the road and we've there's been a late accrual of half a million dollars put through for additional subsidy as a result of 
the flood event. flood event repairs. So we had recognised in there the expenditure, but we were unaware of how much subsidy was going to come on that, so we've accrued some subsidy into that. It's half a million dollars at the moment more in revenue than what's shown in that June report. Okay, thank you. <coughs> Hamish? Uh, just, just for Council's advice, just want to note the, um, on page three, the percentage forecast of capital expenditure. And while we um, would, would like to do a better than 73% in, in the year, that is um, up an up-to-date number and is higher than the previous various report that you uh, saw. Um, uh, and so that's pleasing that it has come up and, and shows uh, what we have got done. If you take into account both the uh, Library and Civic Centre and the CBD work, which it had some timing issues around uh, budget versus the um, cost, uh, then our um, performance in that uh, capital expenditure area um, is, is pleasing, although we note there's always uh, more we can do, or do better, I guess. Page four, five. <coughs> Six and seven. One question on six under roading it talks about the road metalling plan for June will be delayed in the next financial year. I suppose it might be a question or a comment for Mr. McCann. We're now in the next financial year, so we need to get the gravel on. That's correct, and, and with the weather at the moment, this is the ideal time to do it, and they are programming it and doing it, getting into it. It is ASAP, is it? Yes, yeah. uh, and look, at in, in the workshop in, in just over a week's time, you'll um, you'll get all that information as to where they are doing it all and... The programme and whatever. In the programme, yeah. Right. Councillor McMillan. Thank you, I'm back on page four, but um, in the revenue under other games, I, I'm assuming, possibly wrong, is that the um, money from Otakaro? Regarding the, where does that show up in revenue? Did we get any before? Did we get any payments made for the new civic centre before June? The, the ARS project is um, would be a grant for that. That's, that's Just while Paul's looking that up, yeah, yeah. I don't think other games would describe a grant no, from the government. No. So. Um, I'm sure any money from Atacara would be in the subsidies and grants, the third line down. Yep. But so what other gains covers is perhaps Paul can, or Erin can help. Other gains is gains on sale of property. Um, it'll be um, revaluations re that we put through um, on uh, forestry and our investment property goes through there. Um, from memory, I think Otakaru, we had received $1 million first claim, uh, with the second claim that I think went in just after balance date, so we have their first payment in that um, <coughs> set of accounts. Okay. Page 8 and Fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Councillor Mackay. Mr Mayor, it gives me great pleasure and can I, the question is to you sir, can I please congratulate the Chief Executive and his staff on the words, we are continuing to explore options to close the relevant intakes and avoid need for these structures in the stop order. Uh, if I can ask that question. You can congratulate them at any time you like. <laughs> <laughs> they take it. 18, 19. 20, 21. Twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, 
435. Just um, one question on 34, under loan repayments. We swapped some loans from internal to external. What have we actually repaid for the financial year? If you took those ins and outs out. Oh, excuse me, I, I can't, I don't know off the top of my head. I'd have to go and have a look at our um, annual report work papers that'll tell. It'll be in the annual report? Yep, yep. But it's a bit difficult to tell because we did swap a lot of it <coughs> into external debt. So I'll have to come back to you on that figure. Yeah, so it's the net what we've repaid because we should be repaying loans every yep. year. There were uh, loan repayments that were due that we couldn't make during the year. Um, because when we had internal loans, we could adjust those at any stage, but when you've got external loans, which are for fixed terms, you can't just repay principal when you want to. So it's a bit of a change this year that we have, for loans that were due to be repaid that related to external debt that we couldn't repay, we've shifted them off to a separate reserve, as if they have been loan been repaid, but they haven't, but we've shown for each account that needed to pay it, a debit to look like it's been paid, and as soon as a loan is rolled over, we'll use that to repay a portion of it. So there's a slight difference that some of these loans that were due to be repaid during the year actually physically haven't been repaid, because we can't, but we're shifting it off to like a set, uh, effectively a sinking fund, that when we can repay it, we will. Is that the loan repayments reserve? Uh, yeah, it's a new reserve that we've created to put some money into. So that'll show in the annual report as well? Yep, as a reserve, and as soon as a loan comes up to roll over, say for example a $5 million loan comes up, we'll roll over, for example, say $3 million of it, and we'll use what's in that reserve to repay the other part of it. Yep, makes sense. 36, 37. Yep. Councillor Wilson. Thank you, Mr Chairman. When we're looking at our local government funding loans, what's a coupon? Is that, does that mean that's a fixed... That's 16.6 .6 million. Is that fixed at 2.01 until May 28, that loan? I think, that, I think that's correct, yes. So I see we've got 10 million coming up 15th of this month. Yep. yep. Can we get 2%? Is that a pretty good interest rate? Uh, 2%. Just, uh, me, um, interest rates are moving up, so it won't be that again, I wouldn't have thought. Um, it'll still be um, relatively cheap finance, but, but there is a question on how far out we go with these um, loans, and you'll see that we actually have gone out quite a lot further on that last loan that we took, uh, which is a lot further out than we normally would do, just on the basis that we think interest rates are going to start moving up and we're going to try and lock them in. The other way of doing it is to put swaps in place, and we've got some of those as well, but we are looking now at longer term debt. Second question, Mr Mayor. I see we've got external debt of 70 million. Mm -hmm. What's our limit? Uh, I've done that exercise, Mr Mayor, and I think from memory it was 230 or some, 230 million or somewhere round about there is when we start running into our LGFA um, constraints. So there's a lot of headroom in, still in debt. And that limit's calculated 250% of your revenue? There's four measures. Four. Um, one is a percentage of your revenue, one is a percentage of your rates, um, and uh, there's a couple of others as well. Oh, one of them is an interest, how much net interest you're paying, and I think that's over your revenue as well. I think the news media should take account that we're one of the few councils that are nowhere near our limit and we don't need Mahuta to take the water off us to free us up to get some <laughs> access to more water, to more lungs. We've got heaps of the freeway. Come in. Uh, page 36, 37. 38, 39. It's the end of that one. We do have to move on to uh, the financial variance report for 31st of July, which is one month's mm -hmm. finances in this year. 
through some mere perhaps some comments. This is the first time for a number of years you've actually had a July um, yeah. uh, report, so we're aiming to get you one a month. The uh, August one will be out shortly, I think, very shortly. Um, but it's quite hard in July to actually estimate what the variances are going to be one month into the year. So it's of some value, um, but it, as I say, it's quite hard to look and see where the variances are there now. Yeah, I think the value is not high yet, but um, it keeps lets us keep track of yep. Yep. Um, things as it goes through. Mm -hmm. Valuable for later, but valuable now to have for later. Yep. Um, councillors, I won't just if you see any. There's not a lot of comments in there because it's too early to put comments yet. If there's something in there that stands out you want to discuss, please do it without me going through page by page. Paul. Mayor, just to remind you too that when you get the September one, all the budgets will be different. And the budgets will be different because now you've carried over, you've approved the carryovers, the budget column will now be updated for the September one, um, there's a September or October one of them, to update all the carryovers into it as well. So the budgets will now all be increased by the amount of the carryovers that you've just approved. John? Question. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. We've been disappointed we've got a financial variance report, but we haven't got a balance sheet. Yep. Sorry, Mr. Mayor. Quite difficult when this was prepared to put a balance sheet because we were still, we don't load the balance sheet until <coughs> the annual report has been finalised. We could put in draft figures, um, it won't be correct um, because we were still, after this report, posting back various accruals back in via the balance sheet, still doing the revaluations um, back. So we could have a balance sheet, but it would only be a estimate. And it wouldn't balance. Um, we could make it balance, but it wouldn't balance with your profit and loss. So we haven't loaded our reserves back in. So yes, we could have put a balance sheet in, but it won't be, it would be an estimated balance sheet because we won't have loaded the opening balances because they're not finalised from the annual report. But we could, for the next one, put an estimated balance sheet in. We would have figures like our cash and bank and debtors and stuff would be accurate. It'll be the reserves that will be not correct. Yeah, I've got a question, Mr Mayor. Oh, John, then. Uh, an actual fact. I of course, would have thought the reserves and revaluations would have only been done possibly once or twice a year, normally as at end of June. So once you've got a finalised end of June balance sheet, then it's pretty much business PAU after that. No, examples of late adjustments that come through in August and September are your evaluations of all your investment properties. We have to wait for that. Um, you're waiting for your revaluation of forestry. Um, you're trying to close off your final accruals, um, which, as I said, mentioned earlier, we had to put a, a, another really late one through, but they don't get closed till generally the end of August. Um, so when we prepare that 30 June, I mean, July report, we're still in the middle of still doing final accruals. So it's a really preliminary report because the balance sheet, opening balance sheet, will still be changing. Okay. I just wonder through you, Mr Mayor, whether um, if there's an indication that would still be of value given the caveats that um, Paul is explaining, uh, if there's sort of an indication that that would be of value, then we, we can provide that. Uh, but if Council wanted to wait for it to be more accurate, we, we'll do it that way. It's, we're in your hands, really. We want to give you what you need. Thoughts? Well, I, I would have thought a balance sheet would have automatically been produced when any of the financials anyhow. What the contents are or how they made up, where it's only coming back to revaluations and reserves and that sort of thing can be done at any time. But I'm looking at more than that, yep. uh, particularly your net asset situation, I mean current asset, current liability situation, which should not really change because that's not altering the um, body of your financial um, balance sheet, I think. So, 
to me, they still you should still do it. Okay. We, we'll, we'll, um, I'm not saying anyone disagrees, so perhaps three years to me, we'll insta insta institute that mm. with, okay. the, with the limitations that Paul has had. Thank you. In the, at the end of that report, oh, sorry. Um, just a question on page 14 under um, business and economic development. I see we've spent 30 per cent of the budget in a month, so I just wondered what that was reflecting. Uh, received 30 per cent. There's a carryover. It's income. It's income. Is that the carryover? Um, to remember me, I think that's the timing of the grants that we receive. There's grants that we receive in economic development, um, and they, the grants come in that don't match the expenditure, so the revenue might be up because the grants has been received. Thank you. Yep. Three, Mr Mayor, I, um, I just want to bring to Council's attention page 17, and you will see um, the line item of operating expenditure under, under emergency management, and the reason I'm bringing it to your attention is that the um, expenditure uh, while still within the annual budget, is out of proportion to the length of time gone by, and that's a, that's a, a direct result of the uh, the uh, recovery from the May uh, floods and the um, time and effort that that has required. So it's just a budget that we are very conscious of in the office as to uh, you know how we um, continue to get through this this year. I know uh, the group manager uh, Jane is very conscious of of that, I and mean, you have to do what you have to do in an emergency. Uh, but I'm um, just alerting to, to that fact that we're keeping a close eye on the operating budget for the rest of this period. Yep, well done. <coughs> uh, takes the end of that report. The annual report's due at the end of the month, 30th of October or thereabouts we're aiming for? Yes. Yep, and we'll adopt it then. Um, I think the meeting is the 3rd of November, I think, Third, that's, that's right. the annual report. Next meeting. And as far as we are aware, we're on target for that. Auditors are here and here. They are on-site and off-site. I think they're on-site for about two days a week, and the rest of the time they are endeavouring to audit remotely. Good. So all going to plan in that mm -hmm. department. That's good. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> that takes us to the end of the open part of meeting. Oh, sorry. Where did that go? It's page 17. Yeah. 79. Page 79, item number 17, Mayor's report. Any questions? I'll move. We received the Mayor's report. Second up, Councillor Cameron. We are not caught up. Got to it yet? I'll wait for you. Okay. I'll give you a few seconds. <coughs> Page 79. 70 on staff. Oh, 70. Okay. Anyway. Community Honours Awards, um, we're wanting to get to level one so we can have the, yeah. like I mentioned last time, the appropriate number of people who need to be there to celebrate that. So, whenever that is going to be. Um, Mr. Mayor, there is, I say there's a new development with the levels in that the EA Network Centre can, sorry, yep. the event centre can have more than 100 people in the auditorium because they can be, there's enough room for them to be more okay. than a metre apart. Mm. Um, I saw that advertised on their Facebook page because they've got a show here that they, they can now carry on with, so that may be worth discussing with them. Yeah, well that's where we're, we're going to have the yeah. celebration here so that's probably good um, yeah. we can start work planning for the uh, awards to go ahead then if that's I think that's okay. just come into effect <coughs> today with the, the Yep, sounds awards. good. Um, I'll move to second at the Mayor's report. I'll put the motion on for please say aye. 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 Carried. Thank you. Um, we do have more items of business, but that won't be until one o'clock when we have NZTA and Stantec coming in for the, the um, bridge report. So what we can do now is we can move into committee and get some of the business transacted with the public excluded done before lunch. Now what time's lunch planned for?
Okay, we'll go to 12.30 and um, I think it was half an hour. <coughs> so we'd like to move, we go into committee. Councillor Brown, Councillor Lovett, all in favour please say aye. 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 You're in. <coughs>